hi. Remember? Yes. yes. Well, I'm going to say hi in a different way. I'm going to say. <laughs> said to me, she said, 
if you really want this, you're going to have to work really hard, take advantage of every opportunity, but don't give up. And that's a very good message. And I take that message all over the world, especially to young people in different countries. And you know some Many, many grown-up people have come to me and said, Dr. Jane, I really want to thank you because you taught me that because you did it, I can do it too. So, have any of you got a dream of what you want to do with your dog? What do you want to do?
that it's there and it makes me feel at, at one with the forest, with the trees, with the birds, with the animals. And so when I was studying the Kinkinis, I was also learning about the species in the Kinkinis. Everything is connected to everything else. And there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different species of plants, insects, birds, animals. Every single one, no matter how little, has a part to play in this wonderful, wonderful tapestry of life. We call it biodiversity. And biodiversity is very important because once we start losing species, then this, this web of life gets, gets torn, 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 and in the end it will collapse. And you talked to who was the first little girl who came up? Who read that? Where are you? The first one was a boy. The boy. Mm -hmm. With you. Yes, okay. You talked about you talked about um, nature, mother nature, right? With you. So um, mother nature, as you said, we are part of mother nature. We can't exist without mother nature. Because just like you said, we get our water, our clean air. But in one way, there's a difference between us, chimpanzees, and other animals. And that's because our intellect has really exploded. We've been able to send a rocket up to Mars. A little robot crept off. And it took photographs and it sent the photographs back so that we could see what it looked like on Mars. And I don't know if you've seen those photographs, but if you have, you want to pick them. And the next time you see a big moon up in the sky, will you do something for me? Look up at that moon and just think, wow, people walked on that moon. We know now people walk on the moon, but most people don't think how magical it is that our human brain enabled us to put people on the moon. And so don't you find it strange that this most intellectual creature that ever walked on the planet is destroying our only home? So I'm going to ask you questions now. I want to know the different ways that you think we're hurting Mother Earth. Who can tell me something? Yes? It's hurting Mother Earth by deforestation. Deforestation, absolutely. Most of this beautiful forest has gone. And thank goodness we came in so we can protect it. But most of it's gone. Come on, something else, yes? Also hurt by killing different kinds of animals. People kill animals for skin and for their tusks. Yeah, poaching. Killing elephants for their tusks. Killing rhinos for their horn. Killing pangolins. Who knows what a pangolin is? Anybody? Pangolin is it's called a, well, it's a little animal about this long. It's a long tail and a body. It's got a long nose and very, very long tongue, which is oh, yeah. puts in its stomach. Oh, yeah. It's got scales. Yeah. And then the Chinese people think the scales are good for this. But they're not. It's like fingernails. Yeah. And some people think the rhino horn is good medicine. It's not. It's like eating your fingernails. It's the same as eating your fingernails. Okay, so we can. Uh, we've got some, you have another. What else are you doing to the planet? Yeah. I'm afraid of the ocean. The yeah, ocean. Polluting the ocean. Yeah. We're polluting it with plastic, right? And we now know that almost every single fish that you eat from the ocean has little bits of plastic in the blood. 
than us because the plastic gets washed into the sea and it, it dissolves but it doesn't disappear it's little tiny bits of microplastic and they can last for 2,000 years so it's very good that Tanzania is banning single-use plastic it's better we don't use any plastic it's typical but you know you can make plastic out of potato peeling you can make plastic out of banana skins, and then it doesn't harm anything. But we're polluting the ocean also because all the bad chemicals that people are using for farming, they get washed down into the rivers and into the sea, and that's causing us a lot of problems. So what else are we doing for the planet? Air pollution and releasing poisonous gas from the industries. Poison from the industry. Yeah, absolutely. Household industry, agricultural industry. And you know, one of the real big problems is when you keep billions and billions of animals in little tiny spaces and they produce a lot of methane gas. So carbon dioxide is the main greenhouse gas, but methane is also a very, very powerful one. And who knows about factory farms with animals? Have you seen pictures? Because you put hundreds and hundreds of animals in very tiny spaces. Overgrazing. Yes, well. Uh, it's, it's both, and the problem is that more people are eating more and more and more meat. We don't need to eat lots and lots of meat. Actually, it's very bad for us. We don't have the intestine of a meat eater. We have the intestine of an animal that eats grass and vegetables. And when you eat grass and vegetables, you have a very long gut because you want to get the last bit of goodness out of these grasses. If you eat meat, you're like a lion or one of these other animals. Then you have a short gut because you want to get rid of the remains of the meat before it goes bad and that gives you stomach problems. So I stopped eating meat uh, in 1969. So people say you need meat to be healthy. Well, I told you I'm 85. I'm traveling 300 days around the year. Do I look weak and feeble? No. no. It's partly because I stopped eating meat. But the reason I stopped eating meat, I didn't really care about my health. And I learned about these intensive farms, which did not exist when I was your age. When I learned about them, I next looked at a piece of meat on my plate, and I said, this represents fear, pain, death. <laughs> so I stopped eating it, and I think that's why I'm so healthy. But anyway, that's just one of the other things we're doing to harm the planet. And there's so much of that. How many of you have seen Mount Kilimanjaro? You've seen the snow in the top? When I came first in 1957, that's 63 years ago, there was so much snow going around. Lots and lots and lots of snow. And it was very famous, but there was not so much snow left. Because of, because of the greenhouse gases and global warming now, we've got different weather. And we've got something called climate crisis. You all know about that, right? Yeah. Yes. One of the millennial goals is to, is to try and reduce these greenhouse gases, these emissions from running across the field, but also from animal life. So, anyway, that's just yes. Yeah.